Hi, my name is Dr. Joe Childs. I'm a board certified functional neurologist and today I want to talk to you about ADHD. I want to talk to you about our drug-free ADHD solution that we do in our practice that we've been doing for the last 10 years. We have been helping children with ADHD uh, overcome these issues and we've had some amazing uh, results in our practice and I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. So if you have a child that has ADHD that's been diagnosed with ADHD or another neurodevelopmental issue Maybe they're having a hard time focusing in school. Maybe they're uh, having issues with reading comprehension. Maybe they're hyperactive and they can't sit still. Uh, maybe it's a teenager that we used to do good in school and their grades are plummeting and, and it's, they're saying it's because of his uh, focus. Maybe you've been told you need to put your child on a, uh, a drug like Ritalin or Concerta or stimulant medication and you're not sure you want to do it. Then uh, this short video is going to be for you. Um, again, we have been helping children in our practice uh, uh, using a drug-free approach to ADHD and I want to tell you a little bit about it today on this short video. So most parents are really led to believe that their only choice out there to help their child with ADHD or uh, learning issues and things like that is the stimulant medication. You go to your doctor, uh, you may sit down, you may tell them your child's hyper, they may look at them for a few minutes and next thing you know you're on the medication. What I have found in my 10 years of taking care of uh, children with these issues that almost straight across the board, most parents don't want to put their children on these, on these medications because they're concerned about the side effects, but they're really led with no other choice. Okay? They, this is all they get told that they can, they can do. Um, so what I wanted to let you know is there's, there is a drug-free solution. We've been doing it for the last 10 years. It's probably one of the most successful things that we take care of in our practice or types of, ch types of cases it is our children that we take care of, our teenagers with focusing issues. We get great results. Uh, so there's a drug-free solution to help your child. So the reason why people don't want to do the stimulant medication is because they're concerned about the side effects. You know, open up the white label, you're like, why am I giving this to my child? Insomnia, weight loss, emotional issues, uh, abdominal pain, poor sleep, seizures, dizziness, mood swings. These are all things that go along with having your child focus a little bit better chemically uh, with the drug in school. A um, study from the FDA found that there's a 500% increase in sudden death uh, from a cardiac sudden death in kids that take stimulant drugs. So these drugs are, should not be the first choice. Um, so we're going to talk to you about what we do. So what makes us different from every other doctor or therapist you've seen is we treat children nutritionally and we treat them neurologically. So we look at areas of their brain and we find out what we can do nutritionally to help them. And we have incredible success. Uh, with children. In fact, some children, and it's pretty much commonplace that they, if they're having trouble with grades, they'll go up one or two letter grades almost on a 95% basis. So what we do is we treat the child, not their diagnosis. So we look at them functionally versus the traditional diagnosis. The traditional diagnosis is a label. Your child has ADD, your child has ADHD, things of that nature. You take them to the doctor, yeah, I concur, seems pretty hyper your child has ADHD. We have to be concerned about that because once a child carries that label, you have to be concerned about how that affects a child's self-esteem. So we want to find out which area of your child's brain neurologically is causing the problem. Why is it that they have the problem? So we're looking for the root cause of the problem instead of just masking with drugs uh, and drugs and things of that nature. So the functional, we want to look at what areas. You know, if, you're, if your child's having trouble with focus, that may be the right frontal, dorsolateral frontal cortex. If they're hyperactive, that may be trouble with uh, persistent reflexes, uh, primitive reflexes, where they may have a problem with the medial orbital frontal lobe. We can find that out. So we do neurological treatments based on specific neurological testing. We want to find out you know, which area of your child's brain is underdeveloped and why is this, uh, why is this occurring. So we use a functional neurological and functional medicine approach, which means nutrition, including brain hemispheric balancing. We have found, and the studies have shown, that children with ADHD have a disconnection between left and right sides of their brain in that one side is underdeveloped than the other. It's usually the right side of the brain. We do vision therapy, ocular motor and eye movement therapy. So we look at the child's eye movements and we develop a, a, an approach to help them. We do vestibular or inner ear. Uh, the inner ear and balance sensors can really affect the areas of the brain that cause uh, focus. We do something called interactive met metronome functional neurology, which is drugless, surgery-free neurological care, and then functional nutrition based on blood work. These are the things that we do. So let's talk a little bit about a brain imbalance. 
Uh, children have functional that have these issues have really a disconnection or an, a non synchronization between the left and right side of their brain. So usually kids with ADHD they usually have a deficiency on the right side of their brain. The left hemisphere is sort of the gas pedal, and the right hemisphere is the brake pedal. It withdraws from 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 stimuli. So the right side of the brain, it breaks thought, it breaks movement, it breaks action. So here's the thing. Your frontal lobes are big filters, okay? And what they do is filter information. Right now you're listening to me, and you're using your frontal lobe to filter out other aspects. There could be distractions in the room right now. Maybe your child's screaming in the other room saying, hey, I'm, I'm hungry. Or maybe, you're, maybe, uh, maybe there's a bus that just uh, pulled up in the front of your house. Or maybe the, the doorbell's ringing. Or maybe... Uh, you know, there's a TV playing in the other room. You're able to filter that out and listen to just me. Whereas your ADHD child, all of that information comes in just as important. So they're just like, they cannot be still. And it's not really their fault. It's, it's because of the way their neurology is functioning. They have less development in the side of the brain that allows that to occur. Now, I could sit down and talk about left hemisphere and right hemisphere and things like that, but I will tell you that the right side of the brain is the big picture. It's the brake pedal. It's for reading comprehension. It's for understanding the big picture of things, where the left side of the brain is more memorization of facts and it's more uh, approach, so you're going to have more hyperactivity with a high-firing left side of the brain. Uh, I talk about this in detail in my long video, which you can certainly watch. Um, uh, we, we give that to every patient that comes in for a consultation. Um, but I, you know, just for time's sake, I'm not going to go over this in full detail. But I will tell you that children's with children with ADHD or teenagers with ADHD have an imbalance between left and right brain. They also have issues with their eye movement. So we'll do some eye movement testing at our office to measure and see how good your child's eyes are. Now, why are we so into the eyes? Because the brain and the eyes are connected. In fact, your eyes are an extension of your brain. It's the only part of your brain you can see from the outside. So eye movements are controlled by almost every aspect of your brain. So deficiencies in certain components of eye movements can tell us which area of your child's brain is causing, is underdeveloped and causing the symptoms that you're concerned about. So we'll do this test called a VNG test. It gives us a printout of the eye movements. Now we don't do this with the real young, young kids, like four-year-olds, but if they're over five, six, and older teenagers, seven-year-olds, they usually have no problem wearing these goggles. These goggles are, um, they're basically like pool goggles when they have a camera in there. And then we develop vision-based therapies to help these children. We'll do vestibular-based therapies, balance-based therapies. We'll do uh, uh, eye movement therapies with balance therapies. We'll do something called Interactive Metronome. It's a computer uh, s program that we use headphones and we listen to, uh, your child will listen to visual, uh, will we'll watch visual or they'll have visual input, they'll have auditory input and they'll have to do a gross movement task to a beat of a metronome. And this is a study from that. This is just one therapy that we do, a double blind placebo controlled study of 9 to 12 year old boys diagnosed with ADHD found those undergoing treatment with interactive metronome showed statistically significant improvements over both control groups in attention and concentration, motor control, coordination, language processing, reading fluency, and control of aggression and impulsivity. This is from the American Journal of Occupational Therapy. We love this therapy. It's, it's one of many, many therapies that we use in our program. We also do nutritional testing. We want to find out, does your ch child have any issues with food sensitivities, with inflammation in their body? Do they have hypoglycemia? Do they have uh, in a, in a, in a lower, lowered amounts of good healthy fatty acids? Do they have stress hormones? Do they have leaky gut? These are all things that can occur uh, with children. I mean, the, the children of today don't eat the way they ate 20 and 30 years ago. This is why we have to see such an increased amount of ADHD. Uh, but we, we do this testing and we do specific nutritional recommendations based on this testing. And it's all an attempt to develop neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity means that the brain can change. Neuro means brain or nerve. Plastic means plastic or moldable. So the brain is moldable. Your, your child's brain develops through sensory stimulation. And so when we, when we deal with children with ADHD, we have to understand that they have a neurodevelopmental problem, meaning their brain in certain areas may not be as developed as it should be, 
and it's creating an outward set of symptoms. Where we also, I'm, I also see a lot of head injury and concussion cases. That's a brain that may be developed already, but an injury, a, a concussion, a brain injury causes it to go backwards. Where kids with neurodevelopmental disorders like ADHD, there may be parts of their brain that may not be where they should be for their age, but they haven't really gone backwards. So we want to create neuroplastic change where we want to increase the way the brain functions in those weak areas with stimulation and good nutrition. It's amazing how well it works. At least 90 uh, to 95% of our, our children that we see in our office have incredible changes. Some will go up two letter grades, three letter grades in some cases. Uh, it, it's amazing the changes. Uh, please watch some of the, the testimonials on, on this video and you'll see what I'm talking about. So we use breakthrough neurological therapy, sensory motor stimulation, and exercises to improve brain function and dramatically help children with ADHD. The bottom line is we're highly successful at helping ADHD children. We've been doing it over 10 years. Uh, we have hundreds of testimonials to show it. Um, so if you're interested in, in finding out more about this, uh, or if you have a child or teenager that's struggling with ADHD, and you're looking for a very successful, drug-free approach to helping children, um, and you want to learn more, what I would do is I would call our office, we do a free consultation, and with that free consultation, you can come into our practice, we'll sit down with you, we'll explain everything that we do, you can ask, you can do a tour of our practice, you can see exactly what we do, uh, we can talk to you about your specific set of, of symptoms, uh, set of, specific set of concerns that you have for your child or teenager. They're all different. We're going to sit down and listen to you, really listen to you. Um, and uh, I'll go over everything, answer all your questions. And at that point, if we decide, if you decide to go on and have a uh, checkup for your child, we can schedule that at the time. But the good thing is, is we do a completely free consultation. You come into the practice and uh, we don't charge you anything for the free consultation to sit down and, and go over that. So again, Right, in our, right on this website, you can just give us a call, 610-518-3370, and we can set up that free consultation. Thank you very much. Take care. Hi, Jason. Um, well, could you tell us uh, some of the current concerns you were having with your son, Alan, uh, prior to coming into the office? Sure. Um, prior to coming to see Dr. Giles and Dr. Durr, uh, Owen had been diagnosed um, with ODD, uh, Asperger's, ADHD. Um, we have gone through some significant behavioral uh, problems with Owen for several years. Um, physical aggression, verbal aggression. Uh, we've tried every different medication under the sun, every medication cocktail to try and you know curb his behaviors. Um, different treatment modalities. You know, mm -hmm. going to see different psychologists, psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. um, just anything we could do to, to try and get him to improve his behavior. Uh, anything that we could do to help him uh, with that and nothing really seemed to work. Uh, we would get little glimpses of hope here on some of the medicines but over time bottom line nothing really worked. Um, so we were running out of options. Uh, we found out about you guys here. Um, we figured we couldn't, couldn't hurt. <laughs> we, right. So you know we've uh, we looked into it and we're still here. Um, you know we did the initial lab work and uh, Owen started, he's been here for several months now. He's in the second phase of treatment with you guys. So we're, we're very happy. Um, we were having, you know, issues with focus at school. Uh, he was very inattentive. Uh, his focus was very difficult at school, very difficult at home. Uh, he was having behavioral issues at school as well, verbal, physical. Um, his grades were suffering. Uh, he wasn't learning the way he should be, he wasn't right. staying up to grade level on certain things, you know, he was great in, in classes like music and, mm -hmm. and art, things like that, he liked science, but other classes such as reading and math and some of the other academic courses, he wasn't doing as well. He was having a really hard time in those classes, he couldn't sit still, fidgeting a lot, um, causing a lot of distractions in mm -hmm. class, even if he wasn't having a meltdown, you know, he was bothering the other kids or mm -hmm. cursing at the teacher or just doing things for attention. So yeah, there was a lot of significant problems. Well, since having care with Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr, what has improved? Uh, since we've been, since Owen's been under the care here, um, we've seen a, a 180 in, in Owen. Um, we did some 
changes, uh, mm -hmm. lifestyle changes. He's gluten-free. We know he was tested. Uh, he is gluten-sensitive. Uh, so we removed that. We noticed an immediate change. Um, <clears throat> we started him on supplements, mm -hmm. uh, different vitamins, and you know the exercises that, that we do when we come here, uh, as well as the home exercises that the doctors recommend. Um, we do all of those things now on a regular basis, and Owen has made again, you know, like this magnificent change, you know, that we just uh, I've never seen before. Um, you know, he's 12 now, and it really feels like for the first time, you know, I have like this this, this little person who, you know, I never really got to meet before. I mean, it's, it may sound odd, but like it's it really feels like that because for so many years, you know, he was. It was a struggle. A struggle would be putting it lightly. You know, every you, every day you're walking on eggshells. You never knew what was going to happen. You never knew what kind of day he had. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really affected us too from the family act and the, the family end of things because you know, like any parent, the kind of day your kid has is the kind of day you have. Mm -hmm. So when he did good, I did good. When he did bad, we all did bad. So. So Dr. this has impacted your life. Doctor Durs and Doctor Child's treatments, and then everybody that works here. Everything that you guys have all done has mm -hmm. had a tremendous impact on Owen. He's recognized it. You know, when he start, started to see the changes, that mm -hmm. was the key. When he started to see himself acting differently than how he was before, man, he, he jumped right on board. Um, it's still a challenge. Uh, he's, it's, it's, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, the diet is difficult. It requires, it requires commitment. And it is hard. It's hard to tell your kid no that he can't have birthday cake at the birthday party when all the other kids are having birthday cake. Mm -hmm. But the payoff is much greater. You know, it's either have the birthday cake and suffer the consequences, and I've seen that firsthand, having made those mistakes, but it can be done. You know, it, you can't give up. But it is a huge commitment uh, to, to do, but it's absolutely worth it. So I would definitely recommend to anyone having any second guesses or, or looking into it, come here and give it a shot because it's, in our case, it has been life changing for Owen and for us. So I just want to thank you guys and, you know, thank you. That's all I have to say. I don't know what to say. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and thank you for bringing Owen here. Hi, right. Jenny. Hi, Jamie. So, uh, what complaints did you have prior to coming to the office? Um, our son, who is Four, was four when we started care, was extremely hyperactive, very impulsive, um, very angry, and was really hard, had difficulty focusing. Okay. And um, how long has he had this hyperactivity impulsiveness? I noticed he was hyperactive from when he was an infant, from like baby six months old, crawling around. If he wasn't climbing or destroying something, he wasn't doing anything. He never sat and played with toys. Okay. Um, I noticed it even more when we started homeschooling, um, which was right around when we, we brought him here to be evaluated. Um, trying to sit and do school, he would not. He would run from one side of the room to the other and jump, and not, I could not, he would not sit in color a picture ever. Okay. And um, what, what was the effect um, in your family life and at home and everything? The hardest part was, one, getting him to actually sit and focus on either what you were trying to tell him, what you wanted him to do, um, and then he was so impulsive whenever we would try to keep him from doing what it was he had the um, impulses to do, he would just completely blow up, no self-control, be angry, scream, um, and that was very difficult trying to take him out anywhere. In the middle of the grocery store he would be screaming if I wouldn't let him touch everything in the row. And um, since having care with Dr. Childs and Dr. Durr, what has improved? Everything. He will sit and color a picture now until it's done. He'll even ask to color another one. Um, he focuses on his schoolwork. He will sit in his desk and watch his video and do his papers. Um, he has much fewer temper tantrums. Um, and even when he has them, it's so much easier to calm him down. Um, and he doesn't even do the annoying little impulsive things like slapping my arm when I would talk to him. Great. And um, how is this impacting your life and family life? So much more peaceful and quiet and we can go out and do the things we want to do and I don't have to worry about him having a tantrum everywhere we go or 
tearing something up. <laughs> Great. And um, any other thoughts on your experience um, at the office with the doctors, the staff, anything like that? It's all been wonderful. Everybody's been very friendly and explained everything to us and very helpful. It's been a wonderful experience. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Marianne. What health complaints did your grandson have prior to coming to the office? He was um, di he's seven and a half, was diagnosed with ADHD, and um, some of the um, spectrum disorders. He um, started here at six and a half, and this is after about two years of trying to read, uh, research, and everything else, and there was always this missing part that we just couldn't see and realize. And um, seeing the infomercial that Dr. Childs had last year, uh, it was just like light at the end of the tunnel for us. So we came up for a visit, loved the office, and um, had him tested here for different things and um, the blood work and all. And found out that he was gluten sensitive. And we already had the red dye and all those other sensitivities checked into before coming here. But we didn't know that the gluten would impact so much. And um, switching his diet and doing the exercises, the metronome. We called them floor exercises to the point when we went to playgrounds, he would do the balance beam on the curb. He just, he incorporated that into his daily life all by himself. To, and he also, whenever anybody would ask him, would you like this or that to eat? He would always say, is it gluten free? And um, he's grown up so much emotionally over this past year which is tremendous. It's just been tremendous. He went from tantruming anywhere to three times a week for, it could have been a half an hour to five hour episodes, three times a week's a lot, to hardly anything now. He has these tiny little, I don't want to do this, and you can redirect him within five minutes. That was simply unheard of a year ago. He's, it took time, three months, six months. He started gradually getting into easier to redirect. And um, he's doing tremendously well in school where his, he's a second grader, but his uh, scholastic scores are in the third grade level. So he's brought that up and um, it's just his overall well-being that's improved greatly, which leads us to our quality of life, too, because it, it's, like, really great being able to say, Alex, you have five more minutes, and then we have to go to the next task. And he might give you a little bit of, I have to go to the bathroom or I want a little break. And I do let him get up, and he does his exercises between subjects doing homework. And it's just... The greatest routine ever that we will, being here with Dr. Child and Dr. Durr and all their staff has given us a new path and a new direction to take and uh, we're really enjoying it. It's, um, it's just opened our eyes to a different way of life without medication and that's something we never wanted to do. We never wanted to put him on that medication. And I'm glad we didn't because he's turned around and he's a normal little boy with all of his little normal things at, with the tantruming aside. And he knows that too. He'll do his deep breathing exercises when he feels that he's getting overwhelmed when he's transitioning. And these are these are coping skills that he can take throughout his life. And I'm so glad we introduced this to him at seven and a half, because I know a lot of adults that could use this training. And um, 
we're very, very happy with the outcome. And it's, it's a lifelong thing. It's not something that you sign up for a year and over and done with. These are abilities that he can take throughout the, the next 60 years of his life, 70 years. And um, the exercises are very oriented so that because of his left brain needing a little bit more stimulation. But these are all tasks that he can do that it's not going to kill him to run a marathon. He can do these simple exercises every day. And we do. We just get together and 15 minutes, you're done. I mean, a TV program <laughs> takes longer than 15 minutes, you know? And it's just, we just have it scheduled and timed and, you know, we either do them in the morning. It's flexible during, throughout the day, but we always have them done before we go to bed. That's, he's just um, really good with them because he even reminds me, are we doing the metronome tonight? Well, we do the metronome every other day, but it was like, no, we're doing the floor exercises next, you know, but he, he really wants to, um, he wants to improve his life. And at seven and a half, it's great to see that. Absolutely. And um, that's pretty much all the questions that you rolled up into one, which was great. Um, but any other thoughts on the experience in the office with Dr. Childs or the staff, anything like that? Very flexible. Uh, we've come all the way from Philadelphia and um, always given me the schedule I needed, knowing the traffic would be outrageous <laughs> sometimes on the turnpike. Never had a bit of problem with anything. I love it here. I'm going to really miss everyone, and so is Alex. All but, right. um yeah, uh, and they even have a little children's room because he just loved that playroom. Aww, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>